Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, my name is Tanika. In today's video, I am going to be doing a full face of nothing new. So I've seen Ali Glines do these videos, and she's just going through the makeup that she already has and is using it. It's as simple as that. I think these days we get so wrapped up in new releases, and there are just so many new releases. You can't keep up. You just physically and financially can't keep up. So I've got a bunch of makeup here. A lot of them used to be like really old favorites of mine as well. So I'm excited to dip back into it. So if you're excited for this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let's go. So I'm starting out with the Stila One Step Correct Primer. <sighs> This is a throwback. So this primer has the three different colors in it. You've got green for correcting redness, peach for dark circles, and lavender for swallowness. I used to love this for correcting my redness. It is a high-end item, so it's something that I wouldn't repurchase a lot. And now that I found my L'Oreal Infallible Anti-Redness um, Primer, I was going to say concealer. I just reach for that a lot more because it is more affordable and I can afford to buy it as often as I need it. Now I'm going to do a little bit of color correcting with something that I haven't dipped into for a really long time and that is the Rimmel Insta Conceal and Correct Palette. So as you can see we've got the peach, the green and the lavender again. So I would use the peach for under my eyes and the green for color correcting any blemishes. A couple of years ago, color correcting become a really big trend and it's something that not everyone needs, but if you do need it, it's actually so damn useful. So because I'm so fair, my foundation doesn't really have enough pigment to cover all the redness that is in my skin. So going in with a green primer or green concealer like this just really helps. So I'm just going to put a little bit on like that and then I'm just going to use my finger to go in with the peach corrector and pop a little bit under my eyes. Now again, my dark circles aren't that bad, but this definitely helps to make sure my concealer is giving me the most with its coverage. Now for foundation, I'm going in with the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in the shade 110. I remember when this was released, it was like... Finally, a super fair shade with a great undertone that actually matches me. It was like one of the first at the drugstore that was actually a really good match and not something that I had to adjust with lightning drops. So this one, I just dab it on with my finger. From memory, it's got a medium coverage. Yeah, that's definitely a medium coverage. I can still kind of see the marks here from the pigmentation on my cheeks. I feel like the market has really changed in the last couple of years. When I first started getting into makeup, there really wasn't a lot of options for fair skin. Now there's quite a lot more and even the drugstore is really expanding. So this is the shade 110, but they also have a fairer shade called 102. So it's great to have options. All right, I'm going to go in with just another little layer, but this one I'm going to blend out with my sponge. For concealer, I'm going to be using my Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define in the shade C1. Now this one kind of matches my skin tone. It definitely doesn't brighten, but I've actually really been into that in my concealers lately. Just something to give me coverage under the eyes because I find having that full coverage under the eyes just makes everything look a bit more flawless. I remember when this was first released, everyone was carrying on about how it was a shape tape dupe. Even I got in on the action. And even though it does have a good coverage, it was nowhere near as full as Shape Tape. A lot of people did find Shape Tape to be quite heavy and drying though, so this is definitely a good option if you feel that way. For powders, I've got two here. The first one is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder, and then I've got the Rimmel Stay Matte Press Powder. So I'm going to use the Maybelline to set under the eyes. Now, I haven't used this in so long. I've been so obsessed with my models prefer mineral finishing veil. I literally forgot I had this shoved up the back of my drawers. Now I do have the shade 05 Fair, which is a US shade. I did buy it off of eBay. This powder has been released in Australia, but the lighter shade is 10 
fair light or something. We don't have the shade 05, which is a real bummer because this powder is amazing. It just gives such a smooth look to the skin. Like everything looks so flawless. Oh my God. And then for the rest of my face, I'll use my Rimmel Stay Matte. This is in the shade 001 Transparent. And I'll just use a fluffy brush to lightly set the rest of my face. For bronzer, I am going in with an absolute gem and this is the Benefit Hula Light. Now here I go again with the back in my day crap, but back in my day, Benefit's Hula was an absolute holy grail for literally everybody, except for me. Because it was too damn dark and the undertone was way too warm for me. And again, there weren't a lot of bronzer options to choose from a couple of years ago if you had really fair skin. So when Benefit come out with this Hula light, it was just like, holy Shit, a bronzer that is actually going to work for me. The drugstore has definitely come out with some better options now, so you don't have to spend a lot of money on a product like this. But if you wanted to, I definitely recommend it, and this bronzer is just so good for fair skin. I am just going to go in and contour very lightly using my Rimmel London All About The Base eyeshadow. Using eyeshadows as contours works so well for fair skin because you can get eyeshadows that have a better undertone that's suited for us. Whereas a lot of the contouring products on the market these days are quite warm and you want something that's more cool tone that's going to create that shadow. So I just go in with an angled brush and very, very lightly pop this in the hollows of my cheeks. For blush, this is another one that literally everyone on YouTube owned. It's the Milani Baked Blush in Luminoso. This one is a really nice peachy color and it does have some shimmer to it. So if you've got a lot of texture on your cheeks, you probably won't like this one because it will accentuate that. But it's such a beautiful color and it's done me so well over the years. For highlighter, I'm going in with the very first highlighter I purchased. And again, back in the day, it was like one of the only highlighters that would suit fair skin and it is MAC. Moo Light Scapade. I feel like I really talked that up then and then I forgot the name. How embarrassing. So this one has like a pearl base with some blue and pink tones marbled through it. It's more of a sheer highlighter, nothing too crazy, but it just gives a really nice natural glow. Okay, so onto brows, I'm also dipping into a product that used to be like my favorite. It is the NYX Eyebrow Cake Powder. Uh -huh. And this is in the shade Blonde. So as you can see, this was very, very well loved, but I just haven't reached for powders a lot lately. I've been going more the pencil, you know, route. So anyway, let's brush these babies up. As you can see, I did get them tinted. So they are gonna be so much easier to fill in. Okay, so I think I used to start with the lighter powder and I'd use this for the front of my brow. And then I'd kind of brush it up. And then I'd go in with the darker powder to finish the rest of my brow. Damn, that actually looks pretty good. Been missing out on the powder for years. And then I'm going to go in with the NYX Brow Mascara, also in the shade Blonde. All right, so brows are done. For my eye base, I'm just going to go back in with my Makeup Revolution Concealer. So first I like to go in with a flat concealer brush. This one is the Morphe M421. And with this, I carve out my brows and just kind of spread the concealer around. And then I go in with the Sigma Precision Flat Angled P88 brush. And this is just like a really mini kabuki brush. And then I stamp over the concealer to blend it out. Sometimes when I'm doing eyeshadow, I will set it with powder. Other times I won't. But I find that using these two brushes make a really, really nice base.
All right, and then for my eyes, I'm going in with my trusty Astralis Neutralize Eyeshadow Palette. This one is an absolute gem, so affordable and such good quality. I'm feeling I want to do like a bit of a pinky, a pinky vibe. I might go in with like this mauve tone and then hit up these pinks here. For mascara, I'm going to be using the L'Oreal Paradise Ecstatic. And then for lips, I'm just going to line them with a nude liner and go in with the Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink in the shade Loyalist. forgot what a nice shade this is oh my god so this is a matte liquid lipstick it does dry down and I think because the formula is really opaque you don't have to put a lot on and I think that's where the problem comes with liquid matte lipsticks is when you apply a lot of layers it becomes really cakey and then to set everything in place I'm going in with my trusty Rimmel insta fix and go setting spray all right, guys, well, this is the finished look. I hope you enjoyed watching. I had so much fun dipping into these old products and like reminiscing on them. I definitely think I'll keep a few of these out on my desk to play with over the next week or so as I get ready for work. The Astralis Neutralize Palette just amazes me every single time. Like that matte shade just blended out so beautifully and these pinks are just so lovely. They all blend in together nicely. It's just such a versatile palette and freaking love it. All right, well, if you're new here, I would love it if you would take a look around my channel and consider subscribing. And if you aren't already, make sure you come follow me over on Instagram. I hope you're all having a fabulous day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. For mascara, I'm going to be using the L'Oreal Lash Palette. Kiki's here. You look so dark back there. <laughs> I've been doing it. <laughs> I like that shirt. Thank you. Pretty comfortably. It's not, it's not physically and... Oh, I'm just asking you. I know you're going to say no, but I'm going to, I'm going to try it anyway. <laughs> um, Don't forget that double chin. How cool are these pants? I ever love. Not bad. Not bad, but I wouldn't get it again. <laughs> ever. <laughs>